Today we are going to take a look at using trig graphs to model situations. So you've learned how to do transformations of trig graphs and that's leading to you to the point where you can transform them in a way that they can fit a situation that you've been given. And this is the situation that we're going to do. It's modeling high tide at Piha. So high tide at Piha today is 4.6 meters and that happens at 10 a.m. Low tide is 2.1 at 4.15 p.m. Now if you've ever looked up tidal charts and um, seen them plotted on a graph of when the height is, you'll see it follows a sine wave um, type of curve or cos if you wanted to model it that way as well. Um, so we're going to go and form an equation based on the time since midnight and find the times of the day when the water is at least 3 meters deep. The first thing we should do is a little sketch of what it is that we're looking at that we're going to try and model. So along our x-axis we will have the time since midnight and our y-axis will be the height of the water. Now we know the top of that happens at 4.6 um, at 10 a.m. and the bottom of that happens at 2.1 at 4.15 p.m. So if we plot 10 to be around here that's 10 hours after midnight and 4 15 pm would be 16 and a half hours after midnight so 16.5 there and our top would happen at the 10 mark and the bottom would happen at the 16.5 and they would be uh, 4.6 and 2.1 now we can expect this to be a, a, a type of sine wave, so we can fill in the rest of what this might look like. So we'd have this bit of curve between the two, we know it's going to carry on back up again after that. And then coming backwards in time, um, is we, we're going to model it to have the same um, time between high tide and low tide here, if we go back to the previous low tide. So that's a gap of six and a half, so six and a half lower than ten. It's going to be something like this and then starts to go back up again um, we're not going to it's going to cross the axis somewhere around there okay so this is just a sketch it doesn't have to be perfect it's just helping us to get an idea of what this looks like so from here we can think about what type of curve we want to model it with um, so this is either sine or cos now since the information we've got starts at the top and goes to the bottom, that's most like the cos curve. So I'm going to choose to do to model it with the cos curve. And then we will need to apply some transformations to make it fit the exact um, details that we've got here. And we can work out what A, B, C and D need to be to fit this context. So the thing I'm going to start with is the horizontal shift. Now remember we talked about the top of the curve being here and cos starts at the top so that's why we used cos but cos starts at the top then um, that would put the this bit of the curve back on the axis and it's not on the axis it's to the right by 10 so it's been shifted to the right by 10 which means that our c value will be minus 10. so we can put in if we start off our first stage will be that cos is x minus 10. OK, that's the first bit. Now, that doesn't get the, get us the rest of it. We're going to build up the, the other pieces as well from what we know. But that will get us a shift to the right by 10. The next thing I'm going to consider is the period, which is how long it takes to do a full um, cycle. So we can look at that from this bit to this bit. That's a full cycle before it starts over again. So it was um, six and a half hours this way and six and a half that way. Oh no, not six and a half. I've just realized I made a mistake at the top. It's 4.15. So it's actually um, this bit here. That's not 6.5. It's 6.25. So I'm just going to fix that up. And that makes this 3.75. And these change like so. All right. So we've got 6.25 either way. Um, so one period will be equal to uh, 12.5 hours. This helps us to work out the b part of our equation. So b will be 2 pi divided by 12.5. And I am doing this in radians. Now we don't need to turn that into a decimal. We can leave it as 2 pi divided by 12.5. Um, turning it into a decimal would be less accurate. So now we're at the point where we can put in the b. It would be cos of 
2 pi by 12.5 x minus 10. OK, so we're, we're nearly there. We've got the horizontal stretch and the horizontal shift. Um, now we need to look at the, um, uh, the horizontal stretch for A and the horizontal shift for D. So for A, we're looking for um, this gap here, and then we take half of it because we want the, diff the, the distance that it is, the amplitude is from the middle up to the edge of our curve. Okay, so from the top of the curve to the bottom of the curve, we've got that distance. So A will be 4.6 minus 2.1 divided by 2. So we can work out that that amplitude will be 1.25, which means that we can add it into our equation here, 1.25 in there. And our final part now to work out the horizontal shift for D, and that is how far our um, midline is of this, this sine stroke cos curve, um, how far up that's gone. That's now sitting halfway between 2.1 and 4.6. So we've got D is 4.6 plus 2.1 over 2, giving us 3.35. And now we can put that as the last piece in our puzzle. And here is our final equation. Now, my working on here is a bit messy trying to squeeze this all onto one screen for you. Please do it in a nice set out order for your teacher to be able to mark it easily or the examiner or whatever. Um, I would lay these all out making at least one page of A4 uh, and spread out all of your working so it's easy to follow. Now, once you've got the equation there, you should always go over to Desmos and see if it looks like what you were expecting it to be. And here that is with the places that uh, we were expecting it to be at its lowest and highest. Um, I'll just squeeze that in a little bit to show you the low point here. Um, where we had it going to the low tide over here at 16.25. So we've got ourselves a nicely working curve. Now, the other part of the question, if we go back to here, was from this equation, when is the water at least three meters deep? We can use Desmos to help us here. If we type in y equals three, we've got a line there that gives us the three meter line. Um, and we can work out when that crosses the um, cos curve that we've got here. So it's at 13.69 and 6.31 and 1.19. We can use those um, pieces to say when it's above three meters. So reading off those intersection points from Desmos, we get uh, these values here for when that line goes above the three meter mark. And then we just need to turn them into hours after midnight. So uh, that becomes 1.11 a.m. between 6.23 and 1.41 p.m. and after 6.49 p.m.